viewers, today I am going to be starting part two of my customizing series. Now, what we need right now, get your mac and cheese colored horse that we worked on last time. And then, you know, get your palette or whatever you mix paints on. A brush, a palette knife, and the two colors we're going to use today which is burnt sienna. Go with it. It's kind of a reddish brown color. It's a really nice color. And just a little bit of red. Just a very tiny bit. And then of course, your glazing medium. Glazing medium is optional, but it's nice so you don't get brush streaks. It is so fabulous. All right. So, now that you have your horse, remember we're painting her a nice chestnut color. So, what I like to do, get just a teeny, tiny little bit of this, like a drop. You really don't need much more than that. Get a little drop of it. And really with, that, with this one, you don't even need to mix it with the glazing medium because you have so little of it. And then get kind of a small size brush, dip it in just a little bit of water. Get a little tiny bit on the brush. And you'll want to put it in the darker areas, just kind of the shading. So you'll put, and you don't need this to be blended. Don't even worry about blending it in at all. It's the last thing you need to worry about. All right, there we go. Now we're done with that. As you can see, I just put a little tiny bit of red anywhere that the shading is going to be especially right on the barrel I put it right on her joints and really that's all it is that's ki it's kind of an optional step I mean it's probably not even necessary I just do it because I'm like hey, it makes me feel better <laughs> that's really all it is so now that she has the shading we finally get to move on to a nice real horse color so get your burnt sienna and shake it up shake it up oh this lid and then just put just a couple dots right onto your palette you don't need a whole lot especially for this scale right here now if you were painting like a traditional scale horse you would need quite a bit of paint but since you're not just get a little bit and so you can see that's how much I got. Even that's probably too much, but it's always good to have a little bit extra than not enough, especially if you're mixing colors. All right, and then get your glazing medium. Put a couple drops right into your paint and then get your palette knife or whatever you happen to be using to mix and mix that right up until it's a nice even color when you can't see the blazing medium anymore. All right, and what we're gonna do is just like we did with that mac and cheese color, we're gonna go over the entire horse with this. And you wanna go in very thin layers, several very thin layers, because this is the layer you're going to see. So you don't want any brush strokes whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do, get just a teensy bit of water on the brush. Again, like before, don't get too much water, otherwise it will make lots and lots of bubbles in the paint and ugh, that's not fun to work with. So I'm just get teensy little bit really you don't need a lot at all just get that much don't load your brush with it because it doesn't end well let me zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing here I said zoom why aren't you zooming there we go all right so we're gonna take this and just lightly go over the entire horse and as you can see, this layer is not very opaque, but that is okay. That's what we're aiming towards. Just keep doing that with layer one. 
All right, layer one of brown done. And as you can see, this is kind of the ugly step. She doesn't look very pretty right now, but that is okay. Don't be afraid if your horse ends up looking kind of splotchy like this. As long as the paint is smooth, then you're okay. The paint will probably look kind of splotchy. It's, well, especially since mine is kind of uh, not very an opaque <laughs> color. So it kind of turns out looking like this, but it's okay. You just want to put a couple more layers on until you build up kind of a nice solid color, one that looks pretty good. And when you're to that point where you're like, okay, I'm ready to add shading now. So I am going to start with layer two and then I will get back to you. Layer two done. As you can see, she's starting to get a darker, richer brown color. Obviously, she's still not done yet. She's still kind of splotchy in some point, so it's going to take a couple more layers. But she's on her way to being a nice bright chestnut color. She's no longer macaroni and cheese colored. And a few layers later, here she is. She still needs a couple more layers to go, but I just kind of kind of wanted to show you how her color is progressing. I'm really liking how it's looking so far. It's a really nice, nice chestnut color. And I think because it's turning out so dark, and I really do like how dark it's turning out, I think it'll look really, really good with all the chrome I'm planning to give her. Because you know I'm giving her some big stockings, a nice big blaze, and I think it'll look really good, so couple more layers to go and we are done with this color it's a very nice even brown color she's not going to go any darker than this besides her shading which I will show you how to do next time so there's that and you'll notice that once the paint starts to dry you'll notice a couple areas that you might want to touch up and just go right ahead and do that. Just same steps, just get a little bit of paint mixed with a little bit of that glazing medium. So then it'll stay nice and smooth. So there's that step for you. Step two, this is kind of the bulk of everything. So I hope that helped you. And if you have any questions about this, like if I skipped over something important that you're like, oh no, I want to know how you did this, then feel free to ask me and I will try to explain it for you. All right, so the next step will be shading. Yes, shading will be in the next step. All right, thank you so much. Bye-bye.